if we wanted to bring this into Quixel Mixer and generate some nice looking normal maps and roughness maps, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is not gonna be the best candidate of model. And the, this might not be so clear as to why, because the image files came through quite nicely with the um, diffuse that came in with our 3D scan. But if we look at the UV map by going to the UV editing mode, we can see there's some issues. If I select like this region here, we can see, although the image file blends between this weird kind of stair-stepping checkerboard pattern, if we start to turn this into a normal map, we're gonna have some intense artifacting and kind of uh, reflections going in different directions and, and funny things like that. Similarly, there's the inverse. So we could try to like combine these move them in there together, but we see we're moving the image. So we have to find a way to re-unwrap this um, and then also find a way to take this image file and keep it in the same place. So let's go ahead and um, in our UV editing workspace in this right side, I'm going to make sure I'm in edit mode. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to go to UV, smart UV project, Let's just see what that does. Okay, interesting. So you can see these are nicely organized UVs, relatively speaking. But if we look over here, I'm going to tab out back into object mode. Our texture is just broken apart. And now it's, it's basically, it's been reinterpreted. If we open this up, we can see where everything is kind of scattered about now. Now, how do we get fresh UVs that are nice, consistent, and sharing, uh, you know, its its neighbor, where it's not in different places all over the model, and have the same image file? Well, it's an advanced technique. So I'm going to go back, because we actually want to keep these UVs, even though our model's a little strange. This model is going to serve as a reference for a reconstructed model. So moving over to the Layout tab, we're going to go ahead and make a new version of this model. But before we do, I'm going to rename this and call it base scan. Hit enter. And we're going to come and click in our viewport on the model and hold down shift and press D on the keyboard and go ahead and just hit escape. If we look over here and see what it created base scan 001, let's change that to low res. So now we have two versions with different names. They're sharing the same space. And what I'm going to do is change this low res version. Let's go ahead and turn this into our shaded viewport without the textures. And I'm going to hide our base scan. We want to protect that one. We don't want that one to change at all. So we're going to introduce some modifiers here. This is the wrench icon or modifiers property. And I'm going to come to add modifier and Remesh. Okay, by default, it's going to set up this voxel mode. I want to try out some of these different ones so you can see the difference between sharp, smooth, voxel, etc. Now, you need to be really careful when you start to adjust these sliders because as you're remeshing some of your um, geometry, it can get really intense on your processor to make those calculations. So I'm going to bring up this octree depth. And I think that's about as good as I want it. I'm going to check this box that says smooth shading. And we can see that's looking pretty good. Let's try the smooth version here. Switching between the two. You know, I think I like the sharp version. I think it's keeping some things nice and tight where they need to be. I like the look of that. So let's go ahead and press apply. The other thing I want us to notice is if we look at the base scan, we have 6,000 vertices here, and we've got 2,600 vertices here. If we open up edit mode now, we can see what a difference our geometry is. This is a very kind of light opened up mesh, and the geometry is in kind of an organized fashion. It's not just kind of everywhere. So let's go back to our 3D scan and look at that geometry. Tab into edit mode, we can see, yeah, this is uh, it's wild, to say the least. So I'm going to tab back out of that and hide this one. So, how do we then translate this texture 
onto our low res scan because if we see right now our low res scan even though it's got that scan material on here it's just showing up as black so what we need to check out before we panic too much is with our low res scan selected in our UV unwrapping, UV editing workspace. I'm gonna select everything and again go to UV Smart UV Project. And here where it says Island Margin, I'm actually gonna give that just 0 0.01 and hit OK. And now we can see, okay, we now we do have the image, but it's broken up like it was before when we tried to UV unwrap our base scan. Now why don't we just copy it to the same model? Well, I wanted to go ahead and give it some, some cleaner geometry. Um, that's why we're kind of, it seems like we're repeating the same mistakes, but we're actually, we're trying to improve this at the same time. So there's our new UV map and this funky texture map. So let's find a way where we can translate this, the position of this image onto this new UV map. So what we're going to need to do is go to shading and let's actually make a new material for our low res model. And I'm, I'm making sure I've got the base scan turned off right now with the eyeball. I'm just selecting low res. And I'm going to come over here and make a new material. And I'm going to call this material low res bake. Give it an M on the end. Okay, so it's still got the same um, old texture from our base scan. We're going to do the same thing here. Well, first we're going to X that out. We can see it's completely black again. And we're going to make a new texture. And while I'm testing, I'm just going to keep this low. So I'm going to say low res bake. This default 1024, 1024 is going to be okay. We want to have this small while we're making sure things are, are connecting properly before we go ahead and make this a 4K texture. And I'm going to click OK. So here we are. We've got our base scan and our low res texture, or low res scan. And they each have their own texture map. I'm going to go to the base scan, this top one, make sure it's turned on. And I'm going to click on this, make sure I have this texture selected. And I'm going to click on my low res scan and make sure I have this one selected. Next, I'm going to come up to the render properties and change our rendering engine from Eevee. This is the default often. And go down to cycles. I'm going to leave the device on CPU. And down here where it says bake, I might have to change some of these options. You might have this combined setup, and you might have that unchecked. I think these are kind of what the defaults look like. So I'm going to change that bake type to just the diffuse, just the color. We're going to turn off the direct and indirect lighting contributions. Because we don't have any light in our scene, we're just going to use color to color. Then we want to do selected to active. And I'm going to set a little bit of a ray distance here, this max ray distance 0.2. We're going to try that. Okay, so we're ready to bake just about. This is going to be the button we'll press, but one moment. We're going to make sure we click on our high-res scan, our base scan, and then hold down Control and click on low-res. And now we're going to click bake. We're going to see what happens. Okay, there we go. So if we hide our base scan, we can see, wow, we've got some kind of color image on there. It's a little strange, but it's starting to show up. And if we look over here, we can see this is our low res bake. We've got, um, you know, the texture showing up in this brand new image we made. So let's, uh, let's try something out. It's a trick that I've, I've done in the past that's, that's worked out well. I'm going to go back to my low res model and I'm actually going to untether this material here or this texture from the material. Okay, see how it's bright white like that? We're going to take this low res mesh and we're going to scale it up just slightly by hitting S on the keyboard and just dragging until we're just outside of the bounds. Maybe we need to come down a bit too, so I'll hit G on the keyboard and Z just barely dragging it until it's hiding. And maybe we'll go up just a bit in scale too, just so we are outside of that. Okay, just so the white parts are hiding all of our interior of our base scan, our high res mesh. Okay, now I'm going to reconnect this. We can go ahead and reconnect our low res bake. 
to the material, the texture to the material. And let's go back through our base scan, make sure our source texture is selected, and make sure our destination texture is selected here. Hold down control, click on the first base scan, then click on low res, and now click bake. Let's see how this looks this time. Okay, that is looking a lot better. I do say so. So now let's uh, let's take it up a notch. This is low res. It's a 1K texture file. Now our source image, our source texture is also pretty small, but let's go ahead and see if we can upscale it somewhat. Blender's got an interesting way it'll do that. So I'm actually going to duplicate this. I'm going to hold down Shift D, bring this low res bake over here. We're just going to hold on to it. We don't want to um, forget about it just so soon. I'm going to close this one. So I'm going to make a new texture here. We can call this new high res bake, however much of a story you want to tell. And we're going to make this 4096 by 4096 and click OK. OK, now we can see the text is in there. We've got this new texture selected. Let's go back to our base scan, make sure this is selected. Just go back, make sure everything's still there. Hold down control, starting with our base scan, we're going to click on this one first, and then holding down control, we're going to click on low res, and make sure we go back up to our render properties, and we're going to click bake. Okay, it's going to take a little longer this time to go through, because it's a high res texture, and I'm just going to fast forward this. Okay, there it is. We can see, we can really zoom into this one now. Our high res, new high res bake texture, there it is. So before we move on, we want to save this image because right now it's just kind of living in the memory of Blender. We want to click on this three button menu here in our shading workspace. Go to image, save as, and let's go navigate inside of the same folder where our model and its source texture came from when we had it sent to us from the structure scanner. We're going to save as image. Okay, we want to make sure we have the texture selected. We can select different different textures in here. We have our low res, we've got our high res. Okay, so we do that and then we save it. So now we'll see if we can bring these things into Quixel Mixer. Let's go ahead and save this new low res scan. I'm going to hide the base scan. So we're going to click on that and go to export FBX. And let's make sure this is limit to selected objects. And we're only going to select mesh. The scale here is okay. We're going to change this forward to X forward. And we'll uncheck bake animation. And we'll call this scan. bake and export. Okay, so let's open up Mixer now. And you can see I've already done a little test. So I'm going to make a project for scan. And let's say scan rebake. Our working resolution is going to be 4096 as always. Okay, here's where this process will divert from what we've done in the past for just texture files. The first thing we're going to do is over here in type from plane, we're going to change this to a custom model. And we're going to navigate to our directory where that model was saved just now in Blender, scan bake, and click OK. Okay, and there it is, pointing the right way and everything. There's our new model. Let's go over here to layers. And let's do the same process we've been doing. I'll make a base and a height. And over here in height, we're going to add mask stack on this layer. Three dots, scroll on down to image to height, add an image, and we're going to come find our new high res bake. Okay, not a lot's happened yet. As always, we're going to go back to our mask and play with the height. We're going to drag this wrap to underlying down. And we can see we do have some normal texture, normal information happening, but it's breaking apart around the edges. So why is that? So let's go to our normal view mode. We can get a better look at what's happening. And you can see, yeah, it's jagged around the edges. So let's see if we have any clues as to where that edge is coming from. 
because that's really just not going to blend out no matter how good of a painter we are. Let's go back to Blender and see if we have any clues. So I'm going to go back to the UV editing mode and let's look at this shape here. I'm going to press L on the keyboard and if we look at this edge, this is sort of just like one face that Blender has pulled apart for us. Let's go back to Mixer. Let's see, compare that. That looks pretty familiar. So I think what is happening is our UV map, wherever it is separating, it's also going to separate along our normal map. So we need to be thoughtful about how we're actually doing our UV unwrapping. Blender did a pretty good job. Again, it worked for our diffuse model. And if you're happy with this, that can work. But if we want to start turning this into normal maps with some other effects and things, we're going to want to um, have a little bit more control. So I'm going to introduce that in another video, but here's just how we rebaked this to a low res topology scan.